Barry, Jalen, and I are very excited to be here this morning. Uh, for some of you that may not know who we are, uh, we are actually campus pastors now at the Hillsborough campus. Jalen and I last uh, week, July the 10th, celebrated 46 years of marriage. I'm a very blessed man. We actually showed up at the Heights in 1984, just begin to serve, do whatever was needed, and uh, been here. We were youth pastors some 22 years, enjoyed every bit of that, still love ministering to young people. I'm, I see a lot of young people out here. Wave at me. If, if you're in the house, you're young. <laughs> Come on. I see a lot of young people in the house. Amen. Praise God. Hey, he, those who are planted in the house shall renew their strength. They'll be fresh and flourishing even in their old age. Oh, hey, hey, yes, you will. <laughs> hey, I, we're, we're excited to be here. Uh, I, I want to, before we just jump into this thing, I'm gonna, we're going to show about a two-minute clip. As you're watching this clip, I want you to listen to the words that are being said. Sign the retreat. Sound. Retreat. Come on, I think you got it. The title of the message this morning is No Retreat. Somebody shout no retreat. no retreat. I know I'm in the right place this morning. There's some warriors in this house. Amen. And what I want us to just pick up on as we're looking at that video, if you noticed, everybody was retreating. They turned and they were running from the enemy. But you had one person, somebody say one person, one person. that turned around and he ran to the battle. And he began to shout no retreat. No retreat. He, he actually got the banner, he got the flag, and he began to charge the enemy. Hey, there, there's something, the scripture says, your zeal has stirred up the majority. Your zeal has stirred up the majority. It only takes one person to Amen. stir up everyone else. Amen? Amen. And I, I didn't catch it in the first one. I was watching it just then. I love the look on that guy's face when and he grabbed the flag and he's running. He's looking at him like, are you crazy? What in the world are you doing? We're outnumbered. How many know it may look like we're outnumbered? But there is no retreat in the church of Jesus Christ. Come on. Uh, let, let's go ahead and jump into this word. Bring it. Come on. Uh, I'm in the right place this morning. You know, we, it's been a year. I can't believe it's been a year since we've been here. We've been having a great time in Hillsborough. But we actually spent, Jalen and I spent five years here serving under Pastor uh, uh, Barry and Christy and just love them. And they're, how many know they're doing a great job? Yeah. And, and, and they're leading some warriors in this house. They're leading a group of people here in Burleson have no retreat. Yes. We're going all the way. We're sold out to Jesus. Come on. Praise God. 
There's a scripture that we're going to start with that's where this message came from. Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 10. Who is she? It starts out with, who is she? Who is she that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? Who is she? Somebody tell me. The church, the blood-bought church of Jesus Christ. That's who she is. And we're going to break down these, these words here and look at them. This word morning, she looketh forth as the morning. That word morning means to be up early with passion. That's the church. That's who we are. And determination for any task. It don't matter what they're saying. It don't matter what's in front of us that day. We are blood-bought saints of God. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. It says, fair as the moon. To be bright and made white and clean. How many know the bride of Christ is making herself white? Amen. Come on. It says clean. That word clean means to be chosen, purged, and polished. That's what God is doing in the church. He's causing a church to rise up and go with all of their heart towards him. Listen, he's, we've been chosen. Look at the person next to you. Say, you've been chosen. We're a chosen generation. The Bible says we're a chosen generation. That's been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Anybody been called out of darkness into his marvelous light? Come, It says show forth the praises of him. We're to show forth the praises of him who called us out of that darkness into his marvelous light. I've been called out of darkness. I'm going to show forth my praise. Let's just get a little praise on. Hey, Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. Oh, we bless your name. Oh, I like that. I feel good. It's okay if I just get loose a little bit. <laughs> Clap your hands. Go ahead. That sounds good. Come on. Come on. Come on. Woo. Listen, in the Old Testament, and I, maybe you already know this, but I want you to get it in you. In the Old Testament, when Israel would go to battle, they would take their shields and they would take their sword. Come on. And they would begin to beat their shields with their sword. And it put fear in the enemy's camp. Come on. We're putting fear in the enemy's camp. There's a church in Burleson, Texas. We ain't afraid. There's no fear in us. Greater is he that's in us than he's in the world. Come on, church. We start a riot this morning. It, it's already started. So when your kids are acting a fool in the house, you just start walking around. Hey, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, I better keep going, man. I, listen, clear as the sun. I like this one, clear as the sun. That means free from darkness to be hot and inflamed. It means to be set on fire. Terrible as an army with banners. That word terrible means frightful, to fear a powerful and strong, violent, prevailing force. Can I say that again? To fear a powerful and strong, violent, prevailing power. There is a power in the earth today. It's the church. It's, the, it's those who are full of the power of the Holy Ghost. We have HG power, Holy Ghost power. It's a prevailing power. I'm telling you, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Amen. I said the blood ball. He's, he said, I'm building my church. I'm building my church. It's an army. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church, says Jesus. It may look like we're losing. Like, can I tell you, we're winning. Amen. We're pushing the forces of darkness back. That word army. Together, together, I love this one. Together, together into troops as a band of soldiers to attack, invade, and overcome. Together, together in troops as a band of soldiers. Somebody say band of soldiers. Band of to attack, invade, and overcome. That's why we're here. That's why we're planted here in, in, in Burleson. We're, we're a band of soldiers. And man, what I love about this, and I've always saw this, that but not every church has been planted by God. Some are planted by man. I can tell you this church is planted by God. The Heights churches are planted by God. 
And, and I see it as an army base. God chooses where he wants it. And he's setting down that military army base, which is the church that puts fear in the enemy's camp. Just because we're here, we're putting fear in his camp. Come on, we're putting the devil on the run this morning. Whatever's going on in your family, whatever's going on in your life, he's got to go. Hey, ho, he's got to go in Jesus' name. And so I want you to begin to see that. And the more God can trust us to raise up disciples, soldiers of Jesus Christ, the more people he'll send to us. And there's been an increase taken forth. Come on, going on. Because this army is growing. Come on. And so we, we got Granbury. We got Hillsboro. We got Cleveland. We got Burleson. We got La Fuente. Listen, we're raising up a mighty army. God is raising up a mighty army of soldiers. Soldiers. A band of army. Listen, that word soldier, listen to this. He who, one who serves in the army with experience and skill, who is brave and honorable. We are the army of the Lord. We are a band of soldiers. You know, the Bible tells us to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. He says to wage a good warfare. He says to fight the good fight. Somebody say it's a good fight. Come on, I love that. We are military. Come on. We're warriors. We're pushing back the forces of darkness in Jesus' name. God has us here for a reason. It's not just to go to heaven. Come on. We were not saved just to escape. We were saved to penetrate every area of society with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are the light of the world. We are the army of the Lord. We are a band of soldiers. So we endure hardness. It's hard. But we're soldiers. We endure hardness. What? As a good soldier. Say, I'm a good soldier. soldier. We endure. We we wage a good warfare. Good warfare. It's a good warfare. And then he says what? Fight. The good fight of faith. What's a good fight? (laughs) Say it again, Pastor. What's a good fight? We're winning. We're winning. Come on. I'm in the right place. I feel this this morning. It says, um, terrible as an army with banners. We have a banner. His name is Jesus Christ. We're marching under the banner of Christ. That word banner there means to raise a flag. Did y'all see that in the video? Raise a flag, banner, or standard. The banner or flag was used, come on, I like this, in leading the charge in battle as a sign of victory and joy. Ooh, can you imagine that? When they saw him run up there, running towards them, everybody else was retreating. I like that. And it took one person that says, I'm grabbing the banner. I'm grabbing the flag. I'm grabbing a hold to Jesus. And I'm running towards the enemy. I'm, there's no fear in us. He's not giving us a spirit of fear, but that I love power and a sound mind. He runs towards the battle. He's waving the flag. And his... His zeal caused everyone else to turn. Everybody else was retreating, but he ran towards the army. He's got the flag. He's got the banner. And what did it do? It caused the rest of them to join in with him. How many know there's more for us than there is against us? We're not in this thing by ourselves. And did you love, I love the end of it. Uh, Sound the retreat. I think the enemy this morning is saying, sound the retreat. In Burleson, Texas, we got to go. We can drive him out. Praise God. So if we stand strong, we band together as an army of soldiers, we can put the devil on the run. If we will not retreat, what he does is try to get us to retreat. Have you ever retreated? I have. It's not a good place to be. No retreat. Somebody shout no retreat. Psalms 20 verse 5. We will rejoice in your salvation. Well, let's go ahead. We will rejoice in your salvation. Are you saved? Thank God. I'm saved up in here this morning. Jesus is the Lord of my life. He set me free. And he said, rejoice in your salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up banners. May the Lord fulfill all your possessions, petitions. We are a band of soldiers. We are a band of soldiers who are marching in a dark and lost world. And we're bringing the love of Jesus Christ to a dark 
world, a people full of hate and darkness. We show up as a band of soldiers with the love of Jesus, with the power of the Holy Spirit. It's something like they've never seen before. They cuss you out and you bless them out. If someone says something bad about you, man, you just say something good about them. That's who we are, soldiers of Jesus Christ. See, God is always, somebody say always. He's always had a band of soldiers in the earth, and he calls them the remnant. We are the remnant of God. See, the remnant, that they, they walk according to the standard. They live their life according to the standard. Here's our standard. They're doers of the word. Not just hearers only. They're not being deceived. Praise God. Let me give you this uh, definition of remnant. A small piece of something left over from the original, but in a smaller portion. In the Hebrew, remnant is translated what is left, what remains, survivors, escapees, the rest. <laughs> what is left, what remains, survivors, escapees, or the rest. You're looking at an escapee. I believe I'm looking at some people that ex escape from the grip of the enemy. You are in deep darkness, but you have escaped. And you're here this morning in the house of God, praising your God. And then he says survivors, survivors. Are there any survivors in this house? There's some of you that have survived death and don't even realize it. <laughs> so, how many of you were born in 1973 or after 1973? You understand what I'm saying? I want everyone that was born in 1973 or after 1973 to stand to your feet. Every one of you. Warriors. Warriors. Look around. Hey, you are survivors. And the reason you're survivors, in 1973, there was a decree that went forth. There was a law passed that said kill all the babies called abortion. Come on, church. You can go ahead and be seated. You survived it. The very fact that you're standing here tells the devil you didn't get me. You know, they say there's been something, probably, I may have the number wrong, but something like 64 million. You're a survivor. If you didn't know it, you should have been dead. You probably, some of you may have got real close to it, but somebody was praying. Amen. Hey, and you're here today. After, let me give you about remnant. After a house is carpeted, there are a few pieces of carpet left. These leftover pieces are known as the remnants. <laughs> I'm about to get happy. No one really knows what to do with them because they don't fit anywhere. <laughs> they, some are dis discarded and others are placed in doorways. Others are placed in doorways. The remnant carpet sets at the doorway and is used to clean the bottom of someone's shoes before entering in. Whew. Have you ever felt like you just didn't fit in? <laughs> Have you ever felt like you've been somebody's doormat? Yeah. Well, can I tell you, it's probably because you're part of the remnant. You see, the remnant believers, they have a way about them. They're not trying to do it. But they have a way about them to make people feel uncomfortable around them. And they can just show up and not say anything. Why? Because they show up with, with the light of Jesus. They show up with the love of God. They show up when they got joy on their face, when everybody else got sad on their face. Come on. And we just show up and we kind of cause them to feel uncomfortable. Man, years ago, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but, you know, raising the standard. There, I could go, everywhere I'd go, it seemed like I was making people uncomfortable. Because when God got a hold of my life, uh, man, he, he caused me and Jaylen to rise up and, and, and lift up the standard in our life. I'm, I'm going to come back to that story because I want to give you this scripture before I do. See, uh, the remnant that caused people to feel uncomfortable around them, they, they have a cry in their heart. They're living a crucified life. It's no longer I who live, but Christ in me. My life is no longer my own. I'm in the military. I'm in the army of the Lord. I'm part of that band of soldiers. And I take orders, marching orders from, from the manual. This is our manual. This is our standard. 
And, and the cry in their heart is for righteousness, for purity, and for holiness to be like Jesus. Yes, Let me give you a verse. Romans 9, 27. Isaiah also cried out concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant will be saved. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Verse 28, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because the Lord will make a short work upon the earth. It's happening. I said it's happening. In Revelation chapter 12, it says the enemy, which is our devil, comes down with great wrath because he knows he has but a short time. And it says he's spewed a flood out of his mouth to carry away the seed of God, the obedient ones. That's us. That's the church. And I'm telling you, he's failing. Come on. Because the remnant is never going to back down. We will never retreat in Jesus' name. Yes, Romans 11.5. Even so then, I love this, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. I'm looking at the remnant this morning. That, that scripture is us. Somebody say, that's me. Yes. Say, that's us. Yes. We're part of the remnant. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. We're going to stay on fire for God no matter what. Yes. Mm. Point one, hold the standard. Hold the standard. You know, the Bible tells us in that, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, I just talked about the flood. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he'll raise up a standard against him. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he'll raise up a standard against him. Look at our nation. Has the enemy come in like a flood? Look at our world today. Has the enemy come in like a flood? Well, we are the standard. He's raising up a standard. What is that standard? It's the remnants. A sold out people to Jesus Christ with no compromise in their life. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Isaiah 62, 10. I'm on the right page. Praise God. Go through, <laughs> go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up. Cast up the highway. Gather the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. Lift up a standard for the people. Remnants lift up the standard everywhere they go. Praise God. See, when... When God delivered me, some of you know the story. In 1981, I was bound up with drugs, alcohol, and I cried out to God, got down on my knees, cried out to God, and he delivered me. I'm talking about eight years bound up in all kinds of addiction where you normally have to go get put in a padded cell and get detoxed and all that stuff. But I called. <laughs> we said it this morning on the name of Jesus. Yeah. Cry unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things. Jeremiah 33, 3. I cried out to God. I can't do this no more. I don't want this no more. I need you in my life. I cried out to God. He heard my cry, and he delivered me, and he set me free in Jesus' name. And we've not looked back. Can I tell you, this fire that he began to put in me came from this right here. Because November the 1st, 1981, I cried out. He would set me free. I took this with me the next day to work. Come on. The sword, the word of God. I remember at lunch, I got this thing out where I was usually getting high. I said, God, I want to know you. I, I want to know you not because of who my mama said, not because of who my daddy said, not because of what some preacher said. I want to know you for myself. I want to know you. Who are you? You just set me free. Why am I on fire? He set me free. I've been set free. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So, so we've never looked back. So we was in church the next Sunday. We've been in church ever since. And, and I was on fire. I'm still on fire. I'm going to stay on fire. We I go to, we're in this church. I'm on fire. God has just set me free, a miracle in my life. I'm not the same man. I am a new creation. I'm, I'm excited. I'm telling everybody about it. And that church, they tried to pour water on me. They said, you know what? You'll mellow out. You'll chill out. You'll get over this. I didn't say anything. So what? What is this? And then so in 1984, we came to the Heights. It was Eastern Heights then, but we showed up here. Man, ready to serve, ready to do whatever God wanted us to do. And I'm on fire. I'll clean the toilets. I'll do whatever. I'm, I'm saved on my way to heaven. I'm going to serve my God. He's my commander in chief. So we're there. I'm on fire. I'm excited. I had people coming up to me. Dude, you need to chill out. You need to simmer down. How do you simmer down a fire? <laughs> you, you need to simmer down. You need to mellow out. 
you'll get over this. I didn't say anything. 1990, I came on staff on, at the Heights. Dream fulfilled. Stepping into my destiny. And, man, I am on fire. Now I'm getting paid to do this. Come on, somebody. <laughs> And I'm on staff. I'm not going to that, sec that job I used to go to. Can you imagine? I'm dancing. I'm excited. They're like, dude, you need to simmer down. You need to chill out. I, see, there were some people that said this to me that were on staff then. They're not on staff anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they said, you, need to, you just need to simmer down. You need to mellow out. I said, if I hear that word one more time, you're about to mellow out. <laughs> you're about to fill some melons upside your head. Listen, I will not mellow out. I will not let the fire of God go out. God has lit a fire on the inside of me. I will not retreat. I will not back down. Matter of fact, you just messed up because I'm about to get more radical than you've ever seen. I'm about to turn this fire up in Jesus' name. Praise God. And see, as I begin to devour this book and I begin to know him, do you know him? I said, do you know him? Yeah. Oh, I, I, uh, th there's a scripture that's always bothered me in Matthew 7, 21, I think it is. It says, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. They said, well, God, we cast out devils in your name. We did all these things. And it sounds like church people to me. It sounds like, sounds like spirit-filled people to me. <laughs> Help us. And here's what his response was. He said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. So... You said, I know him, but my question is, does he know you? How does he know you? Because you're, you're lifting up the standard. This is the standard. So as I begin to devour it, I realize this is the standard that God wants me to live my life by. This book right here. I'm to live my life by this book, which is the standard of God. And so he says in, I think it's Hebrews 1, 7, he makes his ministers a flame of fire. I got a hope of that, Pastor Barry, real at a young age. I said, I'm a minister. Of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you know every one of you are a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ? And the Bible says he makes his ministers a flame of fire. Woo! There's some fire in this house. There's some ministers in this house. Praise God. You know, let me go ahead. I'll just keep moving. Jeremiah 5, 14. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, because you speak what? This word. Behold, I will make my words in your mouth fire, and this people would, and it will devour them. When the enemy comes against us, we better speak the word. I love Pastor Ferris, my spiritual father. You got to put the word of God in you when you don't need it, so it'll be there when you do need it. When do you, do, when do you need it? When the enemy comes into your face. Can I tell you when Jesus, after he got water baptized and he, he full of, got full of the Holy Spirit and Jesus went out into the wilderness for 40 days in fasting and when he came back, the enemy showed up immediately. How many know he'll show up immediately? And he began to tempt Jesus and Jesus answered every single time, it is written. He just let fire come out of his mouth and it devoured that enemy. It devoured that temptation. Come on, that temptation, it knocks on your door. You, got, you speak this word and it's got to go. Hey! You speak, it's, it's like fire. Listen to this, Jeremiah 20. Let me give you this one first. Jeremiah 23, 29 says, it's not my word. It's not up here. That I, it's not my word like a fire. It's like a fire. We talk about that purging and that cleansing and that washing. That fire will burn it out. Jeremiah 20, verse 9. Then I said, <laughs> I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in, of his, in his name, but his word, somebody say his word, yes. not my word. His word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. I believe there's some of you like that. Some of you know what I'm talking about up in here. You've tried to keep your mouth shut. You're trying to keep it quiet, but it was like a fire shut up in your bones. Oh, I've had Jaylen, my beautiful wife. Uh, she's my hero. And she's, uh, anyway, we, in 1984, when we were about to have our first child, we uh, are going through the Lamaze classes, the birthing classes. So we're going through all those classes, and I am on fire. About to have our first baby, Molly Joe, come on. And so we're going through these classes. And Jaylen, you know, she knew that, and it was the last night. This is the last night. We've come through all the courses. The classes were there. There was probably about 10 other couples in there with us. And 
Jalen sat beside me and said, Sheila, oh, no. Because <laughs> she could tell something's, something's going on on the inside of me. And so when we got down to the end of it, I said, can I say something? She said, yes. Mm, open the door. I'm always, <laughs> hey, hey, she said, yes. I, I, I stood up and I said, listen, I want to thank you for this class. Uh, it's been wonderful. I said, the things we've learned, we're going to go into that birthing room with great confidence and with great peace. And, but I, I want everyone to know that there's someone else going into our birthing room with us that's going to give us greater peace and greater confidence than this class did. Nothing against you, teacher, but I, I just want the, all of y'all to know it's Jesus. And I preached the gospel. It was short. And it, you got to believe me, it was short. <laughs> it was. Because I, I was ready, armed and dangerous. Come on. The word was coming out. And then I said, listen, I'm going to be standing, we're going to be standing in the hallway. If you want Jesus to go in the birthing room with you, he can and he will. We'll be out here to tell you about it. Had one couple come up to us immediately. Man, we prayed with them. They ended, their whole family ended up at the Heights. It's the Palafoxes. That, that was in 84. And, uh, man, I got to preach their grandfather's or their dad's funeral. So they, and they're, they're still at the church because of not being ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, no matter where you're at. No retreat in us. Praise God. We reached out to the rest of them, and most of them were saved. Jay Lynn had a big deal a year later. How cool is that? We had all their names and stuff. She had, we had them over at the house, had all those birth babies now are one year old, had all them one year olds in there together, and they got to hear some more gospel. <laughs> we fed them good first, though, yeah. <laughs> and blessed them. Did anybody get anything out of this? Yeah. Somebody just... Praise God. <laughs> I love this next verse I'm about to give you. Jeremiah 48, 10. Cursed is he who does the work of the Lord deceitfully. And cursed is he who keeps back his sword from blood. What are you talking about? Man, the Bible says his word is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. This is the word. It's the word that gives us a victory. It's the word that brings defeat into the enemy's camp. Not, not anything else. It's the word. This is our sword. Cursed is he who does the work of the Lord deceitfully. And cursed is he who keeps back his sword from word. From the, it, cursed is he who does the work of the Lord deceitfully. And cursed is he who keeps back his sword from blood. What you talking about, Pastor Stephen? Come on, we got to speak this word. We got to get blood all over our sword. We cannot be quiet Christians. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. We are good soldiers. Our job is to lead people into the kingdom of God, to bring them to Jesus Christ. Woe unto us if I'm around people and they don't know the gospel and end up in hell someday. This is what we do. This is who we are. All of us. Not We're all ministers. This is what we all do. I better keep going. Mm. See, <laughs> don't tease me now. See, see, here at the Heights, we preach the full counsel of God's Word. We, we, we preach the standard of of the word of God. And we do our best to live up to that standard with the help of the Holy Spirit. You know, I've had, I've had some people make this statement to me before. Um, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Can I tell you, it doesn't matter if I believe it or not. If God said it, that settles it. When God, when God in the beginning created the heavens and earth, when he said he created the heavens and the earth, that settles it. When, when God says that marriage is between one man and one woman, that settles it. When God said he formed me in my mother's womb, that settles it. Life begins at conception. I like that. I like it when Pastor Barry tells, gives me an amen. Mm -mm -mm. Point two. Shine the light. Shine the light. 
Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine. So shine. For God so loved the world. He didn't just say, for God loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. And now he's telling us here, let our light so shine. So shine. Why? Listen to this. Before man, that they may see. They may see. See, we're not even talking. We're not even preaching. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And right here he's saying, we are the light of the world. You're the light of the world. Believers are the only true light in the world today. We're carrying the way, the truth, and the life on the inside of us. Praise God. That they may see your good works. I, I like this statement. I've heard people say this, and I like it. Uh, preach and use words only if you have to. Because how many know our life preaches a lot more than what our words say? We can say one thing, but does our walk line up with it? Oh, I, I'm going back to the 80s now. You can walk the walk, but can you talk the talk? You can talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? You can talk the talk. There's a lot of people talking the talk, but can you walk the walk? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Psalm 60, verse 4. You have given a banner to those who fear you, those who are reverent of you, that it may be, listen to this, be displayed because of the truth. Listen, because of the truth. The truth is in us. And we're always on display. He said, let your light so shine before men. So we're always on display. I don't care where you go. I had to learn this the hard way, Pastor Barry. I've acted a fool a few times in public. Aren't you one of the pastors? i got to be on display all the time. The good news is we can because we have the helper, the help of the Holy Spirit around us. And so, listen, this is who we are. We're a band of soldiers carrying the light of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so we got to keep the light on. Tell your neighbor, say, you got to keep the light on. Now look back at him and say, don't be turning your light off. You know, that, you know there's been times in my life in the past I would, I, I would want to try to turn my light off, but it was like fire shut up in my bones. I couldn't. <laughs> Come on. But how many of you, don't raise your hand, have said, okay, when I'm around all, and when I'm there on Sunday morning, my light is on. Come on, see me, see me. But then I find myself somewhere, and I'm going to turn my light out. So he said, don't hide your light. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, why, do, why do we not hide our light? So they can see our good works. If we're hiding our light, trying to hide our light, how can they see our good works? And so now I'm a group of, we're, we're maybe with a group of people, and I believe a lot different than us, I act a lot different than us, and we're just going to turn our light off and just blend in. Sheila, pause and think about it. <laughs> Got to keep the light on. No matter where we're at, no matter what's going on, oh, my goodness, have, have I have had fun. I don't know how Jaylen is, how she's dealt with it. She's probably had fun with me, too, because <laughs> she's had to win. I, I've had so much fun shining my light in the, with the love of Jesus that I can't hold it back. I've been at family reunions and had to shine my light. Couldn't help but preach a little bit. Shine the light. But here, here's the best way to shine the light, and she'll tell you this. Just sometimes by keeping my mouth shut and letting them see the light. Let them see your good works. Let them see you not cussing at them when they're cussing back at you. S see you loving them with an unconditional love. Letting them see Jesus on the inside of you. Walking in that. We're going we're gonna to be, we're going to do what this book says. He says, bless those who curse you. Did I have I already said this? <laughs> okay, it was a, this is, guys, this is the first time I preached two services in a while. <laughs> so we still just got one in Hillsboro, so where am I at? <laughs> Second service. I told him a while ago, I was going out the door. I said, uh, what do you mean? We have, you haven't, we have another service? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, I lost my place now. 
What did that? What was I saying? Huh? <laughs> Bless those who curse you. Amen. So they're cussing us, but we blessing them. They're, they're cussing us, we're, we're speaking blessings over them because that's who we are. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Pray for them because that's who we are. Let's keep going. Praise God. Mm-mm-mm. Does anybody, I know Pastor Barry knows it. I'm going to see if anybody else besides Pastor Barry knows this. IFG. What does IFG stand for? IFG. Who said, oh, come on, Rachel. Influence for God. IFG. God has called us as a band of soldiers to be IFGs, an influence for God everywhere we go. That's why we keep the light on, because we are the influence. And how many know there's a lot of people out there trying to influence us and influence our kids? And our, we, we are the influence. We are IFGs everywhere we go. We are agents of change. We are part of the remnant, and we shine the light everywhere we go in Jesus' name. We start a revolution, revival, or riot everywhere we go. We start a revolution, revival, or riot everywhere we go because we remain radical and real. Our light is always on. We're real. (laughs) Isaiah 60, verse 1. We're almost done, church. Arise, shine, for your light is come. I love this verse. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Do we, and listen to this one, and deep darkness the people. Do we have darkness over the earth today? Are we living in an hour? I believe it's one of, been one of the darkest times, and it's getting darker all the time. But we are the light. Deep darkness over the people. There's some deep darkness going on over the people. But the Lord will arise over you, the church, and his glory will be seen upon you, the church. The Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Arise and shine, for your light has come. Arise means get up. I believe the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us this morning, to me and to every one of us, get up. The hour is late. He's about to cut this work short. If you got people you know that need to get saved, get up. Get up and shine. That word there, shine, means be set on fire. Get up and be set on fire. For your light has come. That word light there means revelation. Oh, if you're in the house this morning, you have no excuse. Because you're getting revelation. Your revelation has come. What is that revelation? It's time to get up. Whatever you've been messing around with, whatever you've been doing, it's time to get up. It's time to be set on fire. Somebody's going to get set on fire this morning because your revelation has come. Point three, run to win. Run to win. First Corinthians, I love the Apostle Paul. First Corinthians 9, 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? I'm running to win, church. I'm going after that prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize... Uh, is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus not with uncertainty. Thus I fight not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Are there any disciples in the house? Yeah. Disciple means disciplined ones. Yeah. Ooh, this is a good church. There's some good disciples in here. There's some disciplined disciples in here. Why you're running to win. Yeah. You, you, your eyes is on the prize. You, you've left the world behind you. And you're running for the prize. Let's look at this. Acts 20. I love this. This is the Apostle Paul again. Acts 20, verse 24. He said, but none. Did Paul go through some things? Yeah. He Listen to what Paul said. But none of these things move me. Nor do I count my life dear to myself. You remember the remnant? We, we're not living for ourselves. We've died to ourselves. Nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I might finish my race. I love this. With joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. He said, I'm going to finish my race. But then he added with joy. There's joy in this race. The joy of the Lord is our strength. If the devil can't steal our joy, we cannot be defeated. The apostle Paul knew that. He said, man, listen. Listen. 
I'm not, even, I'm not, I'm not just going to finish my race, devil. I'm going to finish it with joy. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Whoo, come on. And can I tell you, Paul, he got the prize. He made it. This is, this is what I want. I want to hear these words at, at my funeral when I'm 107. <laughs> Unless the rapture takes place. <laughs> I'm ready. 2 Timothy 4, 7. I fought the good fight. What's a good fight? I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. Amen. Finally, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Yes. Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, we also, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. That's the word. Lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Come on, I, uh, I started with him. I'm going to continue with him. The author and finisher of our faith. Who? <laughs> Who? Who? For the joy. Somebody say joy. See, the Apostle Paul watched, and he was persecuted. And he, 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 he saw Jesus finish with joy. And he said, I want to be like Jesus. I, I, I've went through some stuff, but I never went through a beating like Jesus did. I, I, I was never nailed to a cross. I was ne and then to, Jesus is hang on that cross. And from that cross, one of the last things he wanted us to get was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And the Apostle Paul said, That's, I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish my race with joy. Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, you are his joy. I am his joy. A band of soldiers that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne with God. Can I tell you, being a Christian is not for wimps. It's for warriors. I'm looking at some warriors. I said, I'm looking at some warriors. Amen. Mighty men and women of God. Yes. Destined to be here at such a time as this. Yes. I love this. God didn't have us here any other time. He put us here for such a time as this. Because he says, you're my best. Yes. He says it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I love this little illustration. You know, it's playoff time. This, this guy's never, he's sitting on the bench the whole time. And it's playoff time. There's only like two minutes left in the game. And uh, we're, we're only uh, like six points down. And then the, it's for the ch championship, the championship. And he looks over and he says, you know, this kid, he, he's, he's a senior and he's never played really much. This is going to be his last game. Let me put him in. Is that what you're going to do? If you're wanting to win a championship, no. Who are you going to have in the game with two minutes left with you need a touchdown, you need something to win the game? Who are you going to put in? You're going to put in your best players because you want to win. And God looks at you this morning and says, you were born for such a time as this. Why? Because you're my best players. I knew you could do it. I knew you were going to be part of the remnant to rise up. Jason, come on up. <laughs> Listen, this is not a 100-yard dash. It's not even a marathon. My brother, my older brother and I, in 1988, we trained for eight months, did exactly what they told us to do. We ran a marathon, 26.2 miles. It was, it was great. It really was because we were in shape. We were disciplined. We did what we were supposed to do. And we ran 26.2 miles without stopping, crossed the finish line. What a, a great time. But listen, that's not the Christian life. It's not even a marathon. Check this out. It's more like an Ironman triathlon. See, a, a triathlon, Ironman, you swim 2.4 miles. As soon as you get out of the water, you jump on a bike. You ride that bike for 112 miles. And then as soon as you get off that bike, you run 26.2 miles. That's the Christian walk. Some of you feel like, oh, I can't swim no more. Well, you're about to get on a bicycle. <laughs> you, oh, I can't ride no more. Well, you're going to get out and run a while. We can do this. Stand to your feet all over this room.
Wait a minute, step back down. You guys are so good. You're so obedient. No, really, step back down because, Pastor Barry, I, I want to do this. Uh, so can anybody tell me my three points? Yes? Shine the light. Whew. Okay, here we go. Hold the standard. Shine the light. Run the wind. Hold the standard. Shine the light. Run the wind. Hold the standard. Shine the light. Run the wind. Come on, church. Come on, warriors. Come on. Now say it like you mean it. You mean it. You mean it. Come on, church. We're going to hold the standard. We are the church. We're going to shine our light. We're running this thing to win. Come on. We are winners. Now you can stand to your feet. I want you to bow your heads with me. If you're in this house this morning, you say, Pastor Stephen, if I died today, I'm not sure if I'd go to heaven or hell. I want you to lift your hand. We want to pray for you. Anyone? Anyone? I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life. Anyone? I don't see any hands, but here's what I'm feeling right now, and I'm about to pray over you and dismiss you. This morning, you say, Pastor Stephen, I need a fresh fire. I want you to run to this altar. I want you, I want you to gather this. I, I, want, I want to be that guy that holds the standard, that woman that holds the standard. Come on, don't be bashful. Come up and say, I, I want a fresh fire. I need a fresh wind. I need a fresh zeal. I, I, I'm going to come to this altar believing for a fresh fire to come upon my life. Oh, Jesus. It's all right. There's room at this altar. Press in, press in. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for these warriors mighty warriors and listen even I just want to let you know thank y'all for being at this altar but I want every one of you out there get ready get ready get ready you're not going to escape this the fire of God right there where you're sitting I know your heart there's some of you God I need you God I want you can I make it so this fire is going to start at this altar and it's going to go all the way back to where you're at so just receive right now by faith fire of God I love on the day of Pentecost it says a wind came and then the fire came there's a wind coming into this very place right now just, just feel the wind of God he's coming he's blowing over you there's a, there's a little flickering of an ember and that fire is getting bigger and bigger receive the fire of God can you do something radical I mean, am I putting you I mean, could you just do something like this no Where's Timothy at? there's been a renewing in their spirits Lord we speak peace we speak healing we speak restoration in Jesus name Lord I thank you I'm standing in a room with mighty warriors with the remnant they're doing exploits for their God Lord I speak of freshness in Jesus name in Jesus name I want you to look up at me and just stretch forth your hands. I'm going to leave you with this blessing. If you need further prayer, you can come to this altar in just a little bit. Just, just get ready to receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. Love on somebody as you leave and stay on fire. Stay on fire. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. We pray that you have been blessed by God's word. For more information, visit us online at heightslife.org.